Hi, I'm Lin Kai. I'm a software engineer at Firebase. Today, I'm going to share how you can manage multiple Firebase projects with confidence using Terraform. Let's meet Sally. Sally is a software engineer working on a fast-growing app. So far, Sally has been building apps in a single Firebase project that she also uses for testing. She enjoys the convenience she gets from testing the real environment, but is worried about accidentally breaking prod or production. For her next app though, Sally wants to adopt best practices by setting up a staging environment to preview changes before they go into prod. This new app is going to be available on Android devices, Apple devices, and the web. The app will use authentication for user management and Firestore to store data. Sally is quite familiar with Firebase console. She opens up the Firebase console in two separate windows, but side by side so that she can work through setting up two identical Firebase projects, one for staging and one for prod. After the two projects are created, she adds an Android app to each project, and then an Apple app to each project, and then a web app to each project. Next, she sets an authentication to each project and enables the identity providers. Finally, she sets up the Firestore databases for each project, including their security rules. Phew, although Sally is quite proud of her fluency in the Firebase console, she can't help but wonder, is there a better way to do this? Introducing Firebase integration with Terraform. Terraform is an open source tool from HashiCorp for managing infrastructure as code. This means Sally can describe her prod project in code and reuse the code as often as she like to set up similarly structured projects. Let's see how Sally's prod project might look like in a Terraform configuration. The Terraform block contains Terraform settings, including the required providers Terraform will use to provision the infrastructure. In this case, most of the Firebase resources are supported in the Google Beta provider. The Google Beta provider has an attribute named user project override to determine how the operations from Terraform will be quota checked. For provisioning most resources, Sally should use user project override equals true, which means to check quota against her own Firebase project. However, to set up her new project so that it can accept quota checks, Sally will first need to use user project override equals false. The Terraform alias syntax allows Sally to distinguish between the two provider setups. Sally needs to create a Firebase project. Recall that each Firebase project is actually a Google Cloud project, just with Firebase services enabled for it. So Sally creates a Google Cloud project first, using the provider with no user project override. Since Sally will be using Firebase authentication with the Identity Platform, a billing account is needed on the Google Cloud project. Next, Sally enables the Service Usage API and the Firebase Management API. This API enablement is usually handled behind the scenes when you use the Firebase console. The Terraform needs to be explicitly told to do this enablement. By enabling the Service Usage API, her new project can accept quota checks. So, for all future resource provisioning, she should use the provider with user project override. And the very last thing Sally needs to do to create a Firebase project is to enable the Firebase services on the project. And note how she's using the provider with user project override. No alias needed. You might notice the depends on clause here, which tells Terraform to wait for the APIs to be enabled. Otherwise, Terraform doesn't know about the dependency and may run into errors when providing resources in parallel. What Sally has so far represents an empty Firebase project. Next, let's look at how Sally can add Firebase resources, such as the platform variant server app and the Firebase products that she plans to use, authentication and Firestore. Sally's project resources can be described as a collection of resource blocks. Terraform creates those resources if they don't exist and updates them if the configuration changes. Let's look at each one. To add each platform variant of her app, Sally makes three resource blocks for Android, Apple, and web. Later, after she's done with Terraform, she still needs to set up her app's code base to connect to and use Firebase. Let's now look at how Sally can add authentication and Firestore to her project. Some Firebase products require underlying APIs to be enabled, 
In Sally's case, this includes some common APIs as well as Firestore, Firebase rules, and Identity Toolkit used by authentication. You might be wondering, where do you find which APIs you need for a Firebase product? Great question. It isn't always easy to tell. Cloud Firestore uses the Firestore API, but the case with authentication and identity toolkit may be less obvious. But don't worry. If Terraform tries to operate on the resource whose API is not enabled, Terraform will show an error message containing the name of the API. Once Sally figures out which APIs to enable, Sally continues to provision the Firestore database. Sally then configures her Firestore security rules as a rule set, which represents a version of security rules, and releases the rule set to apply those rules to the Cloud Firestore database. To set up authentication, Sally first configures general settings, such as auto-deletion of anonymous users. She can then configure signing methods, such as anonymous signing, email password, and phone authentication. Federated identity providers are also supported. More information is available from the links in the description below. Now that Sally has a Terraform configuration file, she can use the Terraform CLI to provision everything that she's defined in the configuration file. If you've used Terraform before, the next bit will be familiar. There are three commonly used Terraform commands, Terraform init, Terraform plan, and Terraform apply. Terraform init will download and initialize the providers specified in the Terraform block of the configuration. Terraform plan will compare the Terraform configuration with real infrastructure and provide a preview of the operations without performing them. Terraform apply will perform those operations to create the resources. Terraform apply actually includes a Terraform plan, where it prompts you to approve that plan and takes the planned actions. Since this will be the first time Sally uses Terraform in the directory, she runs Terraform init first, which will install the Google beta provider. And then she runs Terraform apply, which gives a preview for Sally to approve. Once Sally approves, Terraform will start running. Behind the scenes, Terraform is performing similar operations that Sally would have done in the Firebase console herself. Once Terraform apply is complete, Sally can check out the new project in the Firebase console, where she will find the platform apps, a Firestore database with published security rules, and authentication setup with her selected identity providers. Or without leaving the terminal, Sally can also find the same information using the Terraform show command, such as finding the app ID of the Android app that was just created. Now that Sally has the prod project, how can she use Terraform to create the staging project? Recall that Sally has a collection of resource blocks for the prod project. She can just make a copy of the blocks and tweak them for staging. Copying Terraform configuration may not be for everyone. What if you like to make your staging project infrastructure aligned with your prod project? Can you just reuse your configuration without copying? Yes, there are features in the Terraform language similar to for loops that allow this level of reuse without making a copy. This way, your staging project can stay in sync with the prod project. On the other hand, though, making a copy of the configuration gives you the flexibility to make the staging project slightly different from the prod project. For Sally's staging project, the project should have staging in the display name and probably in the project ID. The platform apps should have a more applicable display name, too. Regardless, since Terraform configuration is checked into source control just like code, changes to infrastructure will not go unnoticed because they are reviewed and tracked. Sally has control on how much the staging project can drift from the prod project. To make changes to infrastructure, Sally can just modify the Terraform configuration file. For example, a few weeks later, Sally has improved the security rules for Firestore and would like to test the mounting staging first. She updates only the staging Terraform configuration to use the new rules and runs Terraform apply. After sufficient testing, she updates the prod Terraform configuration to use the new rules and run Terraform apply too. That's it. Sally is quite amazed at how she can create and maintain two similar Firebase projects 
for crowd and staging with confidence. She can't wait to explore more about how Terraform can help her manage Firebase projects. Welcome to Terraform land, Sally. There are many more ways Terraform can help manage your Firebase resources. For example, you can set up daily environments or even spin up disposable Firebase project for each meaningful code change. To see a list of currently available Firebase resources with Terraform support, visit the Firebase Terraform documentation from the link in the description below. If you have any questions or feature requests, raise an issue in the GitHub repository or Google's Terraform provider, also linked below. Thank you and enjoy the rest of IO.